What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA, and yeah, we got some news today. A uh, little bit outside of what we normally cover on my channel, but it says here, Elon Musk is buying Twitter deal done and confirmed all right and since screen rant is uh covering it i think i have a couple of words to say about this now overall what does this mean it means that twitter is going to go from a publicly traded company to a private company okay uh everybody that has some twitter stock they're going to get paid out i think the, the number was 54 dollars and 20 cents per share uh, so if you owned a lot of twitter stock you probably made a lot of money today and you're probably extremely pleased uh, but in the larger scope for everybody else, um, it says here that Twitter has agreed to a buyout of Elon of Twitter has agreed to a buyout offer by Elon Musk in a deal worth about 44 billion. And the top of the agenda now is solving free speech and bots. So um, I'm a big proponent of free speech a big free speech advocate i think censorship is terrible and wrong and i believe that people should be allowed to speak their minds in a public square and elon talks about that right here in this article yeah it talks about it right here where he's saying an open source algorithm and no more bots uh musk again reiterated his stance that the social media platform was a digital town square where issues that are of significant importance to humanity are discussed yes this is the most important thing about uh, Twitter. You know, you also have it with Facebook as well, uh, but Twitter and Facebook do serve that purpose. They are kind of like, you know, this is where you go to discuss issues, you know, to hear somebody else's side, to get your opinion out there. And yeah, I can go back and forth with people on both of these platforms, not so much uh, Twitter as much, but sometimes with Facebook, you know, you gotta get into back and forth with people you don't even know. But it's always interesting, at least for me, to hear the other side of the story. You know, I don't always agree, sometimes we're getting some little punching matches calling people names and things of that nature you know that does need to kind of calm down but for the most part i think that you want this platform like twitter just to kind of be just hey it's just an open square it's the town square where everybody can come in hey what do you got to say oh man i think blah 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 blah. all right we heard your opinion hey what do you say about it over here and everybody has a voice everybody has something to say i think that's extremely extremely important especially in this day and age where you have a lot of division a lot of constant 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 conversation about what should be done with this what should be done with that how do we you know shape culture how do we you know shape minds you know there's all kinds of political and social conflict right now in the country and in order for all of that kind of stuff to stop you do need a place where ideas can be freely expressed you know you can't kind of say okay we're gonna bottle up these guys over here and let these guys have at it um, because that's just going to continue to keep that consternation between the two groups you have to have some kind of open space where people can dialogue and talk now you know abuse and all that kind of stuff like that i think you know there's some some points where you can say hey you know you can't be abusive or whatever you know you got to tone that down but you know in this day and age it's like hey you know people are going to be abusive and you know that's just an unfortunate side effect that's why they have block and mute you can just block people out all right i don't want to hear from this guy he's gone i can mute this conversation and i don't want to hear about it again bingo all done and you don't have to sit there and say well we got to cut one side off or cut the other side off you know like let everybody just kind of get in that town square and talk uh, but he also mentions another thing and that's about bots right so um bots is like you know you want to push an agenda so we have this little bot that just kind of feeds you the same kind of information over and over and over again you know clouding your judgment you know making it so you don't really know what's truth what's not um these bots are definitely the biggest problem i think that twitter has and if they really want to solve um the free speech ideas and get everybody back on track and get the country and even the world back to the table where we can all just sit around and talk instead of you are over there and i am over here but hey look we're all sitting around this table let's have a conversation about whatever it is if we want to get back to that then those bots gotta go that's like the number one thing that has to go um when it comes to that you know these bots will just spit information out they keep pushing their agendas and you know it's always you know one guy that say hey i know how to get this thing done and you know it just spits out you know agenda laced information that you know it kind of blurs the line between what's real and what's not now 
people like myself, you know, I'm going to read up on everything anyway. You know, I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to read two or three or four different articles from both sides and try to figure out, okay, where's the truth in this, you know, and let me get dig in a little bit deeper. That's what you have to do these days anyway. You should be doing it anyway, but you really have to do it when you have, you know, agendas on all sides, pushing the narratives, pushing the things that they want people to believe. So in my opinion, if Twitter can do something about that, we're going to make this about free speech and we're going to get rid of all of these bots. I think that to me, to me, that's worth him buying it. You know, that's like, okay, great. He did it. Let's see how it works. Um, you know, I was looking at Twitter as well, just trying to see like, hey, what are the Twitter heads saying about this? Like the people that are on Twitter constantly and complaining about everything, what are they saying? And I just saw this particular tweet, and I mean, it just absolutely cracked me up. It said Elon Musk, after buying Twitter and causing all the mentally ill, terminally online weirdos to deactivate their account, <laughs> it's just Thanos sitting back, you know, smiling on the Grateful World like he did in uh, in, in the Infinity War. I, I, I laughed my butt off when I saw this. So, um, yeah, I don't know about you know, you know, saying people are mentally ill or whatever, but I do think that people take a lot of stuff that happens on Twitter just way too serious like if you want to have a conversation with somebody jump in the arena and talk but if you don't like the way the conversation is going you know exit stage left just all right get up out of here i'm gonna just go ahead and leave or you could just you know mute or block the person that you don't agree with move on with your life you know that's what those tools are there for so i think most people just kind of need to calm down don't take everything so seriously don't get all worked up just because elon musk has purchased twitter or anything that happens on twitter it's social media i mean this platform i, I don't know how many people are let me check that out real quick yeah, so I mean, look at this, like, all right, so this is the number of Twitter users just in the United States of 76 million, uh, you know, you got Japan, India, Brazil, you know, and it gives a total, let me see, oh, look at this, all right, 22% of American adults use Twitter, while according to statistics in 2018, this percentage was 2% higher at 24, it's estimated that more than 70% of US users use Twitter, on Twitter, use the platform, keeping up to date with the news. And that's honestly what I use it for. Like, I just really just kind of check the news and kind of get, you know, you know, tweets, updates from that standpoint. I might shill a couple of books and put some information like I put my videos out there like, hey, I got a video. I'll go check it out. That's pretty much about it. But I know and I do that just because I know people are on there trying to start troubles, trying to cause confusion. So I really stay away from Twitter for the most part. Um, you know, I've engaged in a couple of conversations, but not too many. For the most part, like I said, most people and I think this is most people in Twitter um, that are using it are just gathering news. They'll just click on an article and they'll just keep it pushing. So I don't think Twitter, uh, Elon Musk taking over Twitter is going to be that big of a deal. I don't think it's going to change the platform that much. But like I said, if it addresses this particular issue, the box right there, and it talks about the free speech and saying, yeah, free speech, he added that free speech was a founding, a foundation of a functioning democracy. Yes, abs absolutely. I think you got to just open up the town square and let everybody talk. But that'll do it for me. I've gone way too long with this video. Folks, what do you think about Elon Musk buying Twitter? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are you worried? Are you nervous? Oh my God, Elon Musk is on Twitter? Or are you like, eh, it's really not going to affect me that much? Go ahead, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. All right, folks, that'll do it for me. I want to thank you for watching. See you next time.